Hello and welcome to the next All Strut No Fret One Shot. That's where I drink a shot and then get one shot to tell you the plot of an early modern play, No Cuts, No Edits. Today the play is Arden of Faversham, or as it was originally printed, The Lamentable and True Tragedy of Master Arden of Faversham in Kent, who was most wickedly murdered by the means of his disloyal and wanton wife, who for the love she bare to one Mosby, hired two desperate ruffians, Black Will and Shakebag, to kill him, wherein is showed the great malice and dissimulation of a wicked woman, the insatiable desire of filthy lust, and the shameful end of all murderers, or as I prefer to think of it, an unfeasible number of incompetent struggle to murder the world's most boring man. And the thing that's going to get me through it is good old-fashioned vodka. Now, there are 18 scenes in this play, and I'm not sure I have enough vodka to get me through that. Uh, so my focus is going to be to try to list for you all the people who are trying to kill Arden and all the times they tried to kill him before they eventually managed it, hopefully without missing any. So here we go. Arden of Faversham was uh, registered and printed in 1592, though probably performed for some time before that. It is still considered anonymous in composition, though there are plenty of people giving a good argument that at least some of it was written by Shakespeare in his early days when he was script doctoring and collaborating and doing filler bits. So at the beginning of the play, we meet Arden and his one and only true and honest friend, Franklin, everyone else in the play wants him dead. And they discuss the fact that Arden has come into possession of a large pocket of land, but he remains unhappy because his lovely wife, Alice, is in love with a gentleman called Mosby, whom Arden considers beneath them in station because he used to once upon a time merely be a tailor, though he has now risen to the role, risen to the role of steward. Now, uh, he accuses Alice, but uh, they quarrel and then reconcile and she puts him off and he leaves. Now then, Alice has a conversation with Arden's manservant, Michael, during which she persuades him to, or she enlists him to uh, murder her husband, Arden, in return promising that he will get to marry Mosby's sister, Susan, who is Alice's housemaid. Uh, so he agrees to do that. And then Mosby comes in and they quarrel and reconcile. And he introduces her to a painter called Clark. And Clark believes that he can poison people by uh, painting his paintings with poison fumes. And he promises to do that with a painting and then suggests he can do it with a crucifix. But the reward he seeks is similarly marriage to the lovely Susan. So we've got a bit of a problem already arising there. Uh, Arden returns and Alice brings him soup, which she says tastes bad, and she throws on the floor and says nothing pleases him. And then after he leaves, she grumbles that Clark's poisons just don't work. Uh, she then enlists another chap called, this time uh, a man called Green. Green has a personal beef with Arden because uh, the land that Arden has just been bequested includes land that Green regarded as his own source of income via lease. So uh, Alice persuades Green to get involved in the murder plot and Green then goes and hires two blackguards known as Black Will and Shake Bag, which really does sound like it's an in-joke there. And they all agree that they will take it on themselves for appropriate fee to murder Arden. So he's got a few people going for him now. The first attempt is made by Black Will and Shakebag, and it is foiled when a young apprentice opens the shop window. Now, shop windows at that time were closed with wooden boards that went up like that, and when you wanted to open to protect the, uh, the space, and when you wanted to open for business, you would bring the board down like that. And the apprentice uh, times the opening of the window such that it whacks shake bag on the head, causing him to bleed profusely and uh, dissuading him from seizing his opportunity to murder Arden at that point. 
So the next time they try, they make arrangements with Michael. Remember, remember the servant, so he's in the house. Uh, Michael's supposed to leave the doors of the house unlocked so Black Will and Shapebag can come in and murder him that night. However, Michael talks himself into such a panic and a fright about what he's about to do that he cries out, wakes up Arden. Arden comes downstairs and says, you fool, why haven't you locked the doors? And he locks all the doors in there. Shake bag and Black Will can't get in, so they fail to murder him that time. Then Arden uh, tells Franklin about the dream he has that he's being hunted like a stag. Uh, so yeah, he's got uh, bad vibes about what's ahead for him. Um, but in the continued stories of attempting to kill him, uh, Green and Black Will and Shake Bag head out into the hills to try and accost Arden on his way somewhere. But unfortunately, while they're hiding in the bushes, getting ready to leap out and kill him, the local lord shows up and he not only uh, interrupts and invites Arden and Franklin to dine with him, but he also says, oh, Black Will, I spot you over there. Come out and have a crown and try and mend your ways. So that's a bust too. So in order to go have dinner with the Lord, Arden and Franklin head down to the ferry and the others are planning to intercept him at the ferry in order to kill him there. But when they arrive, he's uh, already gone off with the ferryman. They're too late. They missed the ferry. So they didn't get to kill him there. Uh, the next thing we see is a, a I've got to add one more character for you there, I'm afraid, and that is a sailor called Dick Reed, who similarly says he owns some of the land that Arden is laying claim to, and he curses Arden because he says he needs the uh, income from the land to support his family, and Arden says he bought the land from him and he didn't do anything wrong. This will come up later. Uh, next thing... Alice and Mosby decide to walk arm in arm in the garden to come meet Arden to uh, provoke a fight with him, at which point Alice will cry out, murder, murder, and Black Will and Shake Bag will come in and uh, finish the deed. So she does this, but it's only Mosby and Shake Bag who get injured and Arden gets away without harm again. Uh, she then manages to talk it around that it was all Arden's fault for mistaking the merry jest that she and Mosby were playing on him by acting affectionately in front of him. And she actually persuades him to apologise to Mosby and invite him to dinner. And then she finds that he's invited not only Mosby and Franklin, but uh, several other village people to come to dinner that night. So they're all prepping for dinner. And as they prep for dinner, uh, they're going to play. Uh, Arden is now all over Mosby. He's suddenly decided that he's fab. And they're going to play a game of backgammon uh, to pass the time until it's time for the guests to arrive for dinner. So Michael gets out the gaming tables and they have a game uh, which gives the opportunity to uh, Black Will and Shake Bag to come in with their stabby stabby things. They pull a towel over Arden's head and pull him to the ground, uh, thus rendering him helpless while they stab him and Alice too has a go at stabbing him. And then all the guests start arriving. So they pull Arden's body into the counting house, the spare room where the business happens in the house. And Alice and Susan, remember Susan, uh, try to wash the blood away from the floor, but it, it won't go. Um, but they manage to strew rushes on the floor and cover everything up. But pretty much as soon as everyone arrives, the mayor and um, the constabulary and so on, they uh, they guess straight away who it is who's responsible for his death. Uh, Alice puts on a big show of, my husband has not come home. I fear greatly for him. Meanwhile, they've snuck his body out and they've left it uh, out in a field behind the church and uh, then they go find the body but uh, it's that there, there's blood all over the floor they find the blood they know he was killed in the house so really there is no doubt about uh, where he was killed and therefore who did it and so Alice Mosby uh, 
Susan and Michael, a poor bloke called Bradshaw, who was really just tangentially involved, uh, Blackwell, Shakebag and Clark all get convicted of the murder. Uh, several of them manage to run away and uh, there is an epilogue then that uh, tells us the fates of each one, the fact that uh, repentant Alice and uh, despairing Mosby uh, were hanged and burned and that uh, Bradshaw was not spared, that Michael and Susan were both executed, that uh, Shakebag and Black Will were eventually tracked down and caught and killed, and that Clark disappeared and no one knows the circumstances of his death. And the imprint of Arden's body remained in Dick Reed's land for two years after the end of his death. Uh, this was based on an actual scandalous murder that did happen some decades before. So if you like, you can think of this whole thing as being the true crime podcast of its day. And that really is the major contribution that it has made to the history of English drama. Thank you, Arden of Faversham, for giving up your life for this silly, silly purpose. <laughs>